in John chapter 19 verse 30 Jesus says it is finished there are a lot of things that never finished following that statement by Jesus they remained the same but there are also a lot of things that changed following that statement by Jesus Christ and in order to reach consensus understanding the depth of that simple scripture that Jesus did not explain. We go through the entire Bible looking for elements of things that changed when sin entered into our body, which changed when Christ Jesus died for our sins. Because he did not give any clearance or give a list of one, two, three were finished or one, two, three were not finished. It is only through following scripture and looking at evidence of the great change that happened in man's nature following the powerful event of Christ Jesus dying for man on the cross. He said a lot of words before he said it is finished. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. He said, into your hands I give my spirit. In fact, there are people who say he said about seven things in that cross. But there is something he never did while on that cross. In none of the statements that Jesus Christ opened his mouth and said, do we find him blaming anyone or making an excuse for why he has to be on that cross? He took full responsibility. He understood his purpose was this. He understood his role that he needed to play on that cross. He did not say, Father, the people you gave me, they are crucifying me. He didn't say, Father, the people you said I must save, they are unsavable. He did not point at Judas while he was on that cross. He didn't say, you are Judas, who you put next to me in the 12 disciples, has betrayed me. He focuses on the purpose at hand. His purpose was to die for mankind. If we go back into the scripture in the book of Genesis chapter 3 as we have read, we note a very simple trend, but this trend did not change from that moment that they said it. It continues in the entire history of mankind. The trend of giving someone else the responsibility and accountability for one's action. The trend of finding the reasons why we cannot be where we are supposed to be. The trend of finding somebody else to blame for whatever is going on in our lives or for the decision that we've taken. It just makes life easier for the perpetrator. Well, there is a school of thought or a myth which we need to dismantle. There is a myth that says that when Adam was given the tree, when Eve ate of the tree of the garden of Eden or at the center of the garden, she was by herself. And then it's as if she screamed and called for Adam. Adam, where, which side are you? There is something nice. I have got a surprise for you. You know, like she was carrying some lingerie and said to Adam, Adam, I'm going to show you something great. And then she kind of trapped Adam into eating the fruit. But the scripture doesn't say that. The scripture says she ate of the fruit and she gave of the man who was with her. It means Adam was not surprised by the entire story. The entire preaching that the snake gave to Eve, Adam was listening. So he could have stopped the snake at any time and said, hey, shut up, we're not snake and prevented the entire mess but he didn't and the bible doesn't say he forced the fruit into the mouth of Adam. it says he, she gave to their to their husband or she gave to adam who was with her meaning it was his choice so we do not expect adam to not take responsibility but women have been blamed over and over again for things that they are said they have done to men. There is a whole history of blaming women by men for things like, well, I didn't want to have a baby. And she, she just didn't want to, she just forced me into having a baby. And people make excuses and they blame the other party because it just makes them feel better. But one of the things that I believe when Christ Jesus said it is finished, finished. It is the act of excuses. If you listen to what Adam and Eve does immediately after they've been caught, after having done something wrong, everyone was looking for somebody to put the blame to. Adam says to God, the woman you gave me. So in short, the excuse of Adam is, I did not ask for a woman. You gave me a woman and then all of a sudden there is a tree being eaten. Can't you, can't you, you join the doors? Put 
together the dots and you will understand what the problem is. He doesn't say what she, he says, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Then the woman comes and says, the snake deceived me and I ate. The only one who kind of takes responsibility and shut up for the punishment seems to be the snake in this place. The snake knew exactly what it was doing and it didn't have to defend itself. It did everything that they're saying it did. But what remained of mankind has always been a way to blame somebody else for their own fault. We always find something. And in the rurals where I come from, the biggest, the biggest thing that we have found to find solace in for failure is witchcraft. Well, it's very easy for somebody to accept the life that is unacceptable, accept sickness that should be healed, accept failure that they should work hard on because they will say I've been bewitched. Well, I once made a challenge at home and I said that, well, if witchcraft does exist, it's fine. And I do believe that it exists. But I'm not going to live as if I'm bewitched. I will live as if I'm blessed. And if I'm really bewitched, let it be that I do see the results of witchcraft when I'm working very hard to show the blessings in my life. But to sit back and say, I cannot say, there was a time where my eyes will be sore and bringing out uh, tears when I'm trying to study. There was a time where I had severe headaches while I was doing grade 12. And people were, were, were confused, wondering where to take me and what to do about it because I could not study. But at that moment, I decided that I'm not going to accept that this is witchcraft. I am going to work hard with or without the problem. I still have to get the results I want to get in my metric. The problem with, with getting comfort with excuses is that excuses will not pay for anything. There is no way that when I'm now having my children at this age, I was going to take the book of excuses and start reading to my children to say, the reason you do not have a roof in your head is because I was born like this. It's because my father was not there. It's because my mother was not working. It's because I did not have shoes when I was in high school. The reason why your life is like, it's a mess like this is because so and so did the following to me. It's because I was sitting in the middle of witchcraft with four families around me that were witches. Whatsoever excuses that people put together so that they can accept failure are not enough to be a solution to the challenges that are going to come in future. So when Jesus says it is finished, he puts an end to the act of excuse. Why? Because whosoever the son sets free is free indeed. Because what he says, I can do all things. That's what Paul says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, And my God shall supply my needs according to his heavenly riches. When you look at scripture after scripture, there is a reassurance that our path has already been put for us. And we just need to push on and work very hard and very smart to access the glory that God has already put in place for us. There is no point, neither is there any reason to look unto anybody else or anything else, not even Satan. Satan can work. It does not mean Satan does not have power. It does not mean Satan does not want us to fail. It does not mean Satan will not put things before us to stop us from getting to our purpose or getting to our goal. What it means is whatever can be put before us, Christ has conquered on the cross. So it can no longer be an excuse. If you have the power to overcome something and you choose to relax and, and not access whatever blessing God has put for you with an excuse of something that God has already given you the power to overcome. It is not certain that is the problem. You become the certain. Why? Because you are the enemy of your own progress. So I have come to a conclusion and I have come to this realization that I'm responsible for whatever future I want to see in my life. Why? Because Christ Jesus was the ultimate price that was paid by God to make sure that I can reach whatever purpose he has created me to be. There's nothing else bigger than Jesus Christ dying on the cross. There's nothing else more powerful than the blood of Jesus. So if the blood of Jesus has already been poured, it is now in my hands. It now lies in my responsibility. I have got all authority. Christ Jesus said, he says, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. He said, in this world you will find trouble, but do not be troubled, for I have overcome the world. So all 
every scripture after scripture, there is an assurance that as a child of God, you have the power and the authority. There are scriptures that says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's against principalities. It means we have got the power to even win battles in the spiritual realm. So with power to win battles in the spiritual realm, we cannot blame the spiritual realm for the demise of our lives. Our futures are not dependent on the lack that comes as a result of the attacks of the enemy. Our future are dependent on the input and the hard work and all the efforts that we need to put in place to get the results that we so desire to have. We were created with a purpose. God had a plan. That's why Jesus says in the prayer, he says, when you pray, say to God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is a will in heaven that you and me are supposed to fulfill when we are living here on earth. And some of us are living as if the will that we are living here on earth is the will in heaven. When we pray and say your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we have declared that we have the power to establish the purpose that God has put in his plan for our lives in heaven here on earth. And there's no excuse. There's no two ways around it. And we need to, as children of God, hold on, latch on unto the hope that Christ Jesus has the power and has already overcome the enemy. And if we are to live like that, if we hold on to that hope, there is no reason why we should use excuses to stand on the way of all the empires that have to be built. There's so many empires that should have been built and they're, they're lying in the graveyard because excuses package them properly and it seemed acceptable not to become what you felt that God has called you to become. It became comfortable to sit under the shadow of excuses and not do the work of God when you know very well that you're called to preach. It becomes very comfortable to not do the, the work of God when you know very well that you're blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed. The Bible is clear. We are blessed when we go in. We are blessed when we come out. That means me and you have in us the power to become anything that God has proposed us to be. There is no reason why we need to be saying the woman you gave me. There is no reason why we need to be saying the snake. All of those excuses that were put in place, which we could always point unto somebody as the reason why we cannot become what we need to be. The cross and those nailed, they nailed it off. And if you want to become something in your career, if you feel that you're called to be a doctor, you can become a doctor. There is no any reason or excuse that you can give because there is no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. When Christ Jesus overcame all the weapons when he was on that cross, there is no power, no authority, no divinity formed against you that has the authority to pass the glory and the power that was put upon you by the blood of Jesus Christ. When he opened his mouth and he said it is finished, it means that you, your purpose is fully in place, well packaged and ready to be established through you. Yes, you are a work in progress, but you are a work in progress towards the purpose that God has created you to be. And you should not live short of living the full glory of God. There's so many things and so many places which are waiting for your manifestation. The Bible says all creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. May the sons of God not be waiting for the manifestation of witchcraft and all the other things that the devil can put in place to stop our manifestation. May the sons of God not be waiting for, the, for any other thing to happen. May the sons of God not sit and say, we are waiting for the coming of the Lord and, and Savior Jesus Christ, the second coming. He is here. He has already died for us. And for us, ours is to live to the fullness and the glory of God. People want to see us shine in glory. People want to see us succeed in our studies. People want to see us succeed in our careers. People want to see us become millionaires if that's what God wants us to become. But people don't want to hear excuses. And there is not a single thing that an excuse is going to pay for. It doesn't, excuses don't pay the bills. Excuses don't, 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 don't work in a CV. You cannot write in a CV that, no, I could have been a doctor. Excuses are not going to heal the sick. Excuses are not going 
gonna raise the dead excuses 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 do not have the power to be the solution to anything our purpose is not aligned to our excuses it's aligned to our understanding that Christ Jesus has already paid the ultimate price and ours is to live the life that is pleasing to God and ours is to access fully whatever purpose that God has called us to be what is it that you 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 want to you want to achieve in life what exactly is it that you have been putting aside thinking that you are not ready for it or you do not have the resources in place for it i want to tell you right now that if your excuse has been that i do not have money to do this when there are steps that you could be taking without money and you're not taking them the problem is not money the problem is excuses you may have found reasons or you may have found ways to put good terminologies for a excuse and laziness. Some call it procrastination. You can call it, I have decided to call off all of it exactly the way it is. When it's an excuse, it's an excuse. When it's laziness, it's laziness. And if I put my mind to it, I want to achieve it because there is nothing. There is no mountain that has been put before you. There is no, there is no wall of Jericho that is before you that shall not fall at the scream or at the voice of the Almighty God. There is no river, there is no Red Sea, there is no hunger, there is no poverty that can stand between you and the purpose of your almighty God for your life. And the day you understand that, and today we need to understand that, and when we do understand that and fully absorb that, we are unlimited and we are unstoppable and we are reaching our goals and we are reaching them on time. May God richly bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your child, myself included. There's so much limitations engraved in our laziness because we want to put all our peoples and everything or our hope in somebody else's hands. We don't want to take full accountability. It started with our father Adam and we don't want to blame them because Adam and Eve may have started this whole thing but Christ Jesus finished it and we are going to live a life of having finished it. I want to pray for somebody who says I feel weak many times. I want to pray for somebody who says I feel defeated a lot of times. I want to pray for somebody who says I feel like there is nothing in front of me. I feel in darkness. I feel trapped in this body. I feel trapped in this circumstance. And I say in the name of Jesus, the cross of Calvary was sufficient. Christ died and rose on the, from the dead on the third day. And I rebuke any other spirit that may put any fault into anything else. And I say in the name of Jesus, your child is about to take full responsibility for his and their life. And many things, many things are about to happen. Great and mighty things are about to happen through your child's life. In Jesus' name I pray.